Hi guys, well I've been on the road for the last week or week 10 days and I was home for 20 hours in the middle after, gone to, after going to the Huntsville Ham Fest, coming home and heading over to the Northeast Exposition. We had a great time at both. And uh, while I was away, my 8600 arrived. Uh, so I can get doing some testing on it. Some others have already started and I've got a couple of tasks I wanna do uh, coming up. But hey, I thought I'd show you what's, uh, what comes in the box. So here's an unboxing. It's likely a whole not. It's likely a whole lot the same as what you would get when you order one. So let's have a look. So haven't even opened it. So we're gonna be. We'll see. And if you've never seen or received a radio from us, it's double box. That's the first box, taped again. I think I ordered mine with the GPS DO in it. It would be typical shack if things didn't fall down. And I want you to look at just how, how well packaged this is. We double box. We have foam around the outside. That's at least, I think it's just shy of three inches. Um, so you can take that out. We come with a uh, Flex Hand Mic 3, uh, which plugs in the back so you can get on the air right away. Uh, nothing changed there. You uh, radio is plastic bags to protect it. We'll come back to that. You have a um, nice, uh, reasonably long power cable with uh, power pole connectors on both ends. Hooks up really nice to the Shack Power Master 600. We get a LAN cable, short LAN cable. I'll just throw that back in the box because I don't need it. And you get the GNSS antenna. Uh, for frequency stability, because you do get a GPS built in. Uh, mine has, I think, the extra GPS DO, the advanced one, for some other stuff. Uh, let's look some more. And we'll just take it out of the bag. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, there's the front. Of course, it doesn't look as exciting when it's not powered up. And yes, it looks exactly the same as the 6000 series. Uh, a lot of reasons we did that. One of them is to save a lot of money and save you a lot of money because it still works the same regardless of uh, what the outside cover looks like. So now that we're looking at the back, which is the important part, let's run through all the key interfaces. We have a uh, power pole connector, 25 volts or 25 amps rather. We have the power pole connector starting over here. It's a 13.8 uh, volt, that's plus or minus 15%. So you can go a little higher if you like it up to 15 volts is fine. Makes the power amplifier a lot happier. Uh, and uh, typical power poles. Antenna one, antenna two. On an 8600, this is for the two different spectral capture units, which means that you can use uh, both of them at the same time. You can have two different antennas hooked up and have receivers using both of them independently. On an 8400 or the M models, this is an antenna switch so that it's either antenna one or antenna two. Uh, we have a ground connector. We have, uh, um, we'll start up here at the top, the balance in for the balance in microphone. Powered speakers, you have to supply your own speakers, but fortunately there's many choices available online today. Uh, headphones, CW key, and a microphone um, plug-in here. This accessory connector, we, um, we've got a couple of things in there, but most of them you can look up in the hardware reference manual. Uh, it will be identical as the, six, the 6000 series. And um, this serial data is from a commercial radio we sell, so that's not in use. And you'll notice that it's an external display here is covered as well. That's because there is no display and computer that controls the display in this model, but that would be populated with a HDMI connector. Across the top, we have the push to talk. You hook up a foot switch here. Uh, TX request, uh, that's uh, for integrating a couple of transmitters for multi-operator stations. ALC, this goes to your amplifier if you're someone who uses ALC. Most people don't. I don't think I've used ALC in decades. Remote on, 
Uh, this little uh, but, uh, RCA connector is used to remotely turn the radio on and off. Uh, this one is TX1, TX2, TX3. These three are used to generally control amplifiers. You probably ever only going to use one of them. It doesn't matter which one. Uh, but there are cases where people use uh, two or three. I have used three, but I've had transverters on two and three, or I've had receiving antennas that I want shut off when I'm in transmit. Uh, this one's a little unique. There's uh, one here called One PPS In. Uh, that's not even hooked up in this radio, but it, because this is it's populated because these, you know, you buy as a set of eight and mount them. You'll see there's just a single screw, so you really can't get rid of one. Uh, that may or may not be capped, but there's been some discussion on that. And uh, we have uh, RX in uh, for receiver in, transverter uh, A in, this is uh, first transverter. And if, if you only had a 400 series, these two ports would be gone. And you in here, it's a B, these are all BNCs. This BNC is uh, a 10 megahertz in for a reference uh, stability. Um, now, here's the interesting thing. This did not come with my GPSDO. There would probably be a reason, so I'll check with manufacturing and see why. Not a big deal. Uh, this is 10 megahertz out. Again, you, this is only generally used for a reference uh, frequency, maybe to, uh, you know, reference my scope here. You can see here, and then you probably saw my spectrum analyzer up here, which, re, which doesn't mind having a, a 10 megahertz reference if you need to be that critical. But having the GPS antenna here and the GNSS satellite receiver will give you out of the box accuracy up to one half, about one half hertz at 50 megahertz. Uh, better at lower frequencies, so that's pretty good. And I think we're almost done. Uh, LAN cable goes here. There is no Wi-Fi uh, on radios. We really don't want Wi-Fi uh, radios on Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi is just generally reasonably good for watching movies, but in real-time applications, like we do with uh, getting on the air and CW, etc., it's just a little too fragmented or bursty. The term is actually called jittery. And then these last two USB ports are used uh, to control uh, either you can send data to um, amplifiers or there's specialized band board filters, uh, that, or relay filters, rather, that aren't incredibly expensive, like $12 so in, in the U.S., you plug it in there, you get 12, uh, eight relays that can toggle based on certain triggers. Hey, if like such as if I go to 80 meters, I want this relay, particular relay to go click and, and turn on. And, and you can use that for antenna switching. You can turn that, use it to turn power off to receiving antennas. And there's two of them. And you can actually plug as many devices into here as you like. Um, although there's not much power, uh, you can put a hub in here. So you can have as many as of these USB cables uh, that give you RS-232 data, BCD data, or bit cables uh, right here. And they work really well. Uh, people have a lot of success. So there's the back of a new 8600. Uh, and again, if you're an 84 person, you'll just generally be missing these uh, here. And you won't have a balanced in on the microphone. There's, there's only balanced in on the 600 series. Hope that helps. I'm Mike, VA3MW from Flex Radio 73. Take care.